Hey guys, since the last video I made some design changes, and then I made another pair of scissors. They were better than my last design, but they looked pretty much identical, and I immediately thought of some tweaks I wanted to make. Also, all of the machining was essentially the same as the last few videos. I don't want my videos to be too repetitive, I want each video to show something new, and I really wanted to be able to say I was done designing. So I kept making new parts as I thought of improvements. I also tried to make refinements in the machining process. The handle spacers on the bell scissors have two precise holes that help assemble everything together accurately. I normally use a drill and then have an end mill enlarge the hole to the exact size. This works but it requires me adjusting the end mill wear to make sure I always get the right size. It was also giving me burrs, or maybe even slightly tapered holes from end mill deflection. I wanted to try using a reamer, but it didn't go well. After a few holes, the reamers would break no matter what speeds and feeds I tried. I had no issues reaming other materials. From my research, it seems like titanium can be annoying to ream. But I found something that works. I start with a .12 drill, then I plunge with an eighth inch end mill, which gives me a .124 hole, and then I ream with the .126 reamer I want. This comes out much better. I went deeper with the spot drill on both sides for more of a chamfer too. It could be that the lighter cut is what made the reamer work, but there's another benefit of using the end mill. Even if you spot, a drill can walk and flex and make an angled hole. That angle could be putting strain on the also steel reamer I'm using. A flat bottom carbide end mill though will just ignore the hole and go straight down. So I should get something straighter and more positionally accurate. It's still good to drill first so you don't have to worry about the end mill clogging up. Then you can ream that hopefully better hole. Using this method, I was able to run through all the rest of my water jet spacer parts without breaking any tools. Another thing I experimented with is using a ball end mill for deburring. I've been using a small chamfer tool, but it can be hard to get the exact measurement of the tip diameter. Then the tip can be damaged, and this can make it difficult to get the right height offset. I've had a hard time deburring the special pin holes. Using a ball end mill seemed more reliable when trying to deburr small features. They also seem to handle complex 3D geometry better. This does mean there's a concave curve to the chamfer, but I don't find that an issue for small deburrs. If I can get away with using a bigger tool, I will just use a chamfer tool. Another thing I've started doing is deburring unfinished geometry after the first facing pass that way I don't have to worry about any burrs preventing me from flipping a part over in the fixture. A bit more important process I've been ignoring is engraving. So on a couple of the handles I tweaked and remade, I tried engraving them. I did contraption collection and ballast scissors, a serial number, made in USA, and the date. I don't know if I need all that, but it proved I could engrave titanium without chipping the tool. What I was more interested in though, was putting a logo somewhere. I've never really been happy with my current logo thing I made. And I can't really fit it anywhere on the ballast scissors. I collaborated with a graphic designer to come up with something better. I needed something that could be engraved in small spaces. I thought the button could be a good place. I wanted to make some changes to the buttons anyway, so I tried engraving the next ones I made. Not bad. It came out better than I expected. I added extra passes inside the lines. Now it's slightly easier to see. But I think I can make it stand out way more with anodizing. I decided to anodize this latest pair of scissors, like the restoration video I did. 
I tried to get a nice gradient going on each of the handles. And then I splashed nail polish on them. I tried filling the logo engraving on the button with nail polish, then removing the excess. Then I re-anodized everything at a higher voltage. Then I can remove the nail polish with acetone. If I ever do this again, I should make small plugs to keep the holes clean. The buttons didn't come out super good, so I decided to try again at a higher voltage. These came out better, but not quite perfect. There was a little bit more tweaking needed to be done with the button, so I decided to try a better way of anodizing the engraving. I anodized the button first, then I engraved the logo, then I re-anodized at a lower voltage. This was much easier. I also decided to machine some blades out of 303 stainless. I made a special clamp to hold the blade bevel. I'll do more heat treating with blade steel when I'm sure all my design changes have worked. Also, I wanted you guys to see what it looks like when they're finished. Now you can see how I removed the tabs. Once I couldn't think of any more things to change, I finally put the scissors back together one last time. So what do I think? First of all, I didn't consider that my logo gets flipped upside down when you use them as scissors. That's always something you should think about when making a logo. I'm not sure if it really looks bad, I just feel silly I didn't realize this would happen. Let me know what you think of this logo. I also still think I have to do some work on the tolerances. The good news is that all the changes I've been making on these parts have made the tolerances less of an issue, but it's still something to work on. And I need to practice with the heat treating and hard milling. But I think I can finally say I'm done designing based on my own feedback. I think I'm going to have to make more and get some other people's feedback. Hopefully it goes well. Thanks for watching and subscribing and all the nice comments. I'll see you next time. Bye.